Welcome, people, to another exciting edition of Coffee. Mm. Shout out Jim and Patty's Coffee, people. Um, and snakes. So today, we are going to talk a little bit about a couple things. I'm going to go ahead and use some hand sanitizer really quickly. Obviously, hand sanitizer is very important. <clears throat> we're going to talk about a couple problems today. So we're going to talk about some problemly things while I'm checking on the little babes. Um, and we're going to talk about food issues. What do you do if your little, you know, little animal that is just basically a little feeding tube stops feeding? What do you do? Um, so, <clears throat> obviously... You and I both know that we have no idea when it comes to rodent cuisine uh, what we should be looking for, for as far as what is appealing to our, our tiny little serpent mouths. <laughs> From experience, I can tell you <clears throat> rats are disgusting and will ruin every piece of meat that your mouth touches for at least a day or two or maybe even three, or just the idea of it just brings me to like salivation. It's disgusting. <clears throat> anyway, so what do you do if your kid won't eat? Oh my goodness. Huge, huge stress. Um, so we brought one home that uh, was having some troubles and looked totally great, looked like it was going to eat totally fine, totally receptive and everything like that. I was trying to feed it, um, but since it was so young and such a baby, um, it did not necessarily understand the whole nature thing because it was raised in a pet store. So <clears throat> with that, you're going to come into some uh, concerns. Um, we tried, like, I tried eight pinkies. <coughs> Sorry that I'm coughing, but... If, if you've ever brained a rodent, if you know what that is, uh, first of all, you've done it. Or you've had to do it. Um, it's just so gross. Just... The... You know what I mean? It's just gross. Just gross. Anyway. Sorry. Let's get back into this. So we're talking about problem feeders. So braining animals is disgusting. And the taste and the flavor of rodents is disgusting to a human. And that's why we leave them to the snakes. But if your kid won't eat and you are having trouble actually getting it to feed uh, when it has already established its habitat and is comfortable in its habitat already, uh, there are going to be a couple things that you have to do systematically to figure out that um, that issue. So number one, you know, go ahead and just start with pinky, uh, just regular pinky. Don't do anything with it. If it doesn't eat, uh, leave it in the cage for, I have had to leave things in the cage for at least two days just to ensure that he wasn't going to eat and it was disgusting. Sorry, so gross. <clears throat> uh, so, so, so with that, you want to make sure that... Uh, that hey baby <clears throat> also i'm handling the uh the bitey mcbiterson today uh, make sure that you do have options for food uh and you're just gonna have to systematically get grosser and grosser as you come into it uh, with the little little babies you have to get them to eat something or otherwise so they will die um so obviously it's pretty pretty routine when it comes to baby baby tubes Comers. <clears throat> with those, um, we had to do a couple things. So, <clears throat> this one got to eat a little. Definitely some good things. Oh, this is a number three. Number three holding it without it biting my hands off. Awesome. So, yeah, make sure that... Uh, so, first you go from frozen thaw. Make sure that... that uh, uh, definitely be thinking about the enclosure stuff. So if you don't want to have an enclosure aggressive animal, then make sure you do set up those perimeters. Um, get something that is a routine. What we did was we started with a Nike box for a little while with our baby uh, for, for quite a few uh, quite a few months. 
And what the Nike box, what the shoebox does is, number one, it keeps everything in. Number two, it smells like cardboard or paper or wood, which smells natural somewhat. Um, number three, you can close it up. Leave, leave the sneak alone. Give the sneak a little bit of time. Don't be... Don't be popping your big old scary eyeballs off, you know, at the snake, you know, when it's a wee wee tiny thing trying to eat a morsel. So, you know, make sure that if you are, um, you know, hi, Lulu. Yeah. So make sure that if you are actually um, feeding, you do have to do some gross stuff after a while. So, uh, for example, I would not suggest, <clears throat> I personally would not suggest taking the rodent and sticking it on your lip like this, like you would a baby bottle, it would be logically a really good idea because, you know, you're ensuring that the creature is up to temperature for the consumption. But also, you're going to taste rat for the next fucking day. It's gross. Uh, it's so gross. Pardon my, pardon my everything. He's looking good. This is the biter. So this is the little bitey McBite bite snake. And... Sorry, let me focus the camera. Here we go. Hi, baby. With the bitey snakes, you just have to... And once again, I put the corn on my... The corn husk on my hands. Um, it doesn't realize that it's not out of its enclosure. I'm not getting bit. And it's adorable when they bite you. It is so cute. But you don't want to do that to them. You don't want to traumatize them. Um, just because... I don't want this little guy to, you know, be upset and aggressive every time I try to come and pull it out. Um, but yeah, yeah. Third handling and no biting. So that means there's some sort of trust that's being established here. Yeah. Hi, kid. Hi, kid. But yeah. Um, also with corn snakes, if they won't take a brain... <clears throat> If they want to take a brain rodent, your next bet is to get into uh, bedding. So if you have any fresh animals um, or any any rodents that you have, um, when you are feeding everybody else, ensure that that pinky gets rubbed up against the other mouse so it actually picks up more mouse scent. Because that's really what they're looking for. They're looking for something that smells like a mouse. Um, that's, and it's definitely a trigger. It's some sort of olfactory thing that they do. And uh, <clears throat> it's, it's great when they do finally feed, when you're sitting there and you're like, please don't die. I cannot stand to have like a little creature like, you know, be so traumatized that they aren't willing to learn how to, you know, to feed and grow up happy and strong and healthy. So, yeah. But with that, you know, and then also things have also worked like, uh, you know, cutting them in half. <sighs> Disgusting. I'm sorry. I've, I've got to drink some coffee. When it comes to vomit and guts, I just, I just don't really enjoy it all that much. Um, and <clears throat> to be fair, you really kind of have to, you know, oh my goodness. To be fair, you do have to uh, make sure that you are... Hi, baby. Will you be nice? Okay. I'm cool. I will, I will be gentle. I will be gentle. That's right, everybody. Hi, sweetie. No bites? Oh, that's good. All right. And I will take that as a, a success. Ooh, there's that... <clears throat> oh my goodness, such a, such a, woo, darty kid. Anyway, so, um, feeding issues. You just have to keep trying, and with that, you know, you might have to even go for a live, if uh, a live pinky, get that, get that little feeder started, uh, because you have to ensure that they, you know, I mean, they have to eat, <laughs> so it's pretty basic, yeah. Come here, burp, 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 burp. Awesome. Anyway, so, uh, sorry to, uh, uh, anyway, so, thank you very much for following along on this very difficult to track episode of Coffee. 
and snakes. But you did get to see me almost gag and vomit a couple of times. So, I mean, it's not all bad. Take care. Anyway, have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for joining us.